Thank you so much. It was great. Camille Hankins, our next speaker. Camille is founder of Win Animal Rights, that's war, and we are going to win, and No Kill New York. War is a group of hardcore, grassroots, direct action campaigners dedicated to ending the brutality and killing at Huntington Life Sciences and other vivisection labs, as well as the campaign to ban horse-drawn carriages in New York City. And that's going to happen. That is going to happen. No Kill New York was organized in 2010 to stop the killing of homeless companion animals and free roaming animals in New York's regressive shelter system. In her spare time, you don't have any of that, Camille rescues animals from pro-kill shelters and off the streets of New York City. Camille Hankins. Good morning, and thank you all for being here. Give yourself a round of applause for being here at 9 o'clock in the morning after partying last night. Thank you all for being here and being so bright and cheery. That's going to help me. I'm usually going to bed about this time because I work all night. So this is a new experience for me. I've got the very unique honor and privilege of being able to tell you about a campaign that happened over the last two years that had incredible, incredible results. So it's wonderful to be able to tell you about something that happened that was great, that I really didn't, I participated in in a very uh, peripheral way, was involved in strategy sessions, was involved in, uh, in doing some international, like global support days, but it's the, the, the Green Hill campaign, and it happened in, um, in Italy over the last two years. And I've, I've titled my presentation, Direct Action Save Li Saves Lives, because in this case, it absolutely did. I'm brand new to using, brand new to using PowerPoint, so please bear with me as I uh, try to figure this out. OK. It's not, it's not moving it's forward. forward. Okay. No? <laughs> Should I just page up? Yeah, just do it that way. OK. All right, bear with me. This is going to be, this is going to be, but this was a story. I'm, I'm very old school. Most of you know that I have like a telephone that only makes, only makes phone calls. It doesn't bake vegan cupcakes or it doesn't <laughs> vacuum the floor for me. All it does is make phone calls. So I'm pretty old school and non-technical about these things, but this was a story that just had to be told with pictures. Green Hill is an animal breeding laboratory that does mostly beagles, but also some rabbits and some other, some, some other animals. It's part of Marshall Farms, which is here, headquartered here in the United States. But Green Hill is a subsidiary of Marshall Farms. It's in Montesciari, Italy, which is in the Brescia area. They have over 2,500 beagles in this facility, and they supply vivisection laboratories, not just in Europe, but also in the United States. Wrong one. Okay. So the campaign was launched in March 2010, and it was built on the closure of a local breeder called Marini. And Marini did beagles and rabbits and, and rats and uh, mice for vivisection. It was a very effective grassroots campaign where they targeted this particular breeder and they used shack style tactics where it was a combination of education, of above-ground actions like protests, but also there were underground actions. There were liberations, there, were, uh, there was property damage, um, and ultimately they were able to close down that facility and they liberated 700 animals. So World Lab Animal Liberation Week, when they had their, their first event, the first major event, 3,000 Italians, or 3,000 3, activists, I'm sure there were some non-Italians there as well, marched on, uh, on Green Hill, on the town of Montesciari, and then ultimately to Green Hill. I mean, this picture doesn't give you any idea of what like 3,000 people on the street look like, but it, it just give, gives you some, some idea. Am I going backwards again? Okay, here we go. Um, following that, on September 23rd, 2010, there was the first International Day of Action against Green Hill. 
and the, uh, the cities were London, Washington, D.C., good for Washington, D.C., Amsterdam, Dublin, and Ottawa, and also in, of course, there were locations in Italy that, that, that uh, marched and, and protested. September 25th, 10,000 activists, 10,000 activists gathered in Rome against Green Hill. Here's the direct action component. January 4th, 2011, the ALF took five beagles out, a small action, but very meaningful. Um, they took them from the, the office of one of the, uh, of the clients of Green Hill, again, using shack-style tactics. And we also saw that the, the beginning of uh, different suppliers and different clients of, of Green Hill started to cut their ties to Green Hill as the campaign started to work, them, work its magic. 3,000 people marched in Milan on March 5th. We had a banner drop. This is, the, this is the banner before it was dropped. And this is the banner at Green Hill. So they actually dropped the banner on the facility that housed 2,500 beagles. November 19th, 4,000 people protest outside of Green Hill. And this is the best. World Lab Animal Liberation Week this, this year in 2012, we saw the liberation of, of uh, a number of beagles. There were thousands, there were so many people that marched on Green Hill that they couldn't even get a count. There were more people than they could, they could, they could count. Police were everywhere surrounding the facility, and a number of activists had planned to part ways. They were marching down the road to Green Hill from Montesciari, and a number of people parted ways and went up a side road and ended up scaling those fences walked into the facility with police and carbonari everywhere and lifted those beagles out of, out of that hell hole and into the arms of the waiting activists. I keep forgetting which way to go. Another way, okay. This has got to be the iconic picture of that action. Just amazing, all beagle puppies. What came after that is that we had another global day of action, and this is where New York, New York got involved. We, we had a protest in New York City. 40 Italian cities, 30 cities on five continents, 67 beagles rescued, 12 people, 12 people arrested. Now, we heard a little bit of talk last night about, about arrests and bad press. Let me tell you something. There was no bad press. The, This was an illegal action that took place in front of the police. The police tried to round up some of the dogs afterwards, or some of the activists afterwards, and some of the activists did get arrested. The difference was you did not have any organization that stole airtime away from the liberation of these beagles to talk about the fact that direct action was, was something that was bad or had uh, made us look bad or to say that um, we don't really think that using property destruction or illegal activities um, is, is uh, we think that that's a bad thing. So we didn't have other groups jockeying for position to get their message across. Everybody came together to talk about the liberation of these animals. And even better than that, this was used as a case to show that animals should not be, should not be used for vivisection. So they used this as a springboard to work on legislative action that will actually, at some point, there's a possibility that we may see the end of vivisection in Italy. It's just amazing. And I'm going backwards again. Another nat national march in Rome, June 20, 000, uh, 2012, 10,000 people in the streets. 10,000 people, can you imagine that in a small country like Italy? 10,000 people came together and marched. 
Um, just a little side note, when we did our demonstrations at the, at the Italian consulate, one of the most amazing things happened. We had people coming out from the consulate uh, thanking us for being there telling us that 80% of the Italian people are against vivisection, that they thought it was horrible what was done to the Beagle Dogs, and that they look forward to the time that they passed this bill in Parliament that would outlaw vivisection in Italy. So we were welcome at that protest. It was great. All right, that's a, that's a good shot of what it looked like. This is the ultimate. On July 18th, when I, put on my, when I turned on my computer, I saw this picture. And this is a picture of the police in Italy closing Green Hill. A joint task force that involved like the local police, the, na the, the national police, the Carbonari, and the state forestry people came together. They locked the place up. They threw the Marshall Farms, well, the Marshall, the Green Hill people out. Um, what they found inside, they found 100 dead dogs in a freezer. So that's under investigation. Um, they found that when they seized the computers, that records were being altered from the United States, from Marshall Farms in the United States, that they were diligently at work changing the records because I, apparently they knew that this, that this raid was coming. I'm going backwards again. This is the first dog that was taken out after the closure. His name is Vegan. <laughs> the gentleman that's holding him is one of the banner drop, the, one of the guys who dropped the banner on Green Hill. So this is a direct action campaigner. The adoption process has started. The courts have finally given permission for the adoptions to begin. And over 800 of those beagles have been taken out. Many of them were pregnant females or puppies. And they're being rehomed. And they've gotten thousands of applications uh, to adopt those beagles. Right now, I wish I could tell you that it was closed for good. It looks very good like that it'll be closed for good, but right now it's still a pending action in court. And we should have some word, we might even have word over this weekend because the courts were supposed to hear uh, Green Hill's request to return the property to them. But at this time, the property has been seized, the place has been closed, and the animals are in the process of being rehomed. So it's our, it's our hope that every one of those 2,500 plus beagles will be rehomed, will be taken out. It will, it will certainly be the largest liberation of laboratory animals that there ever has been. So direct action saves lives. And I leave you with this last screen, the sign with these little puppies that says Marshall, Marshall Family Chain yourselves in your cages. We are free. I'm going to take the last couple of minutes of my presentation to talk a little bit about some of the things that I heard last night. I have to tell you, I was very, very disturbed after the panel. I was disturbed because I heard things that just weren't, weren't true. I heard that uh, that, that direct action, that the only direct action that doesn't lead to bad publicity is Sea Shepherd direct action. I was like really surprised at that because I knew about this story and interestingly enough, this story has gotten international media attention everywhere except, guess where? The United States, where we've had a media blackout. Nothing about this. Nothing about the fact that the Italian parliament is considering, is considering a bill to completely ban vivisection on live animals throughout Italy. I mean, this is, this is huge international news, but it's not being reported. Marshall Farms is headquartered in New York State. I've been looking at them for the last couple of years trying to figure out how to approach Marshall Farms. This is a place that needs to be exposed. It is the supplier of, of beagles to Huntington Life Sciences. 
Additionally, it's a company that has a huge retail pet business using chains like Petco and PetSmart. They, they sell most of the pet ferrets and almost like 90% of the ferret food and ferret supplies that are sold in the United States, actually are sold in the world, come from Marshall Farms. So, this, so we have a unique opportunity now to look at what happened in Europe and try to replicate some of the things that they did and put some pressure on Marshall Farms. Let's try to close Marshall Farms. We may not be able to get at Huntington Life Sciences directly, but guess what? We have a vehicle of getting at them through their suppliers, and one of their major suppliers is Marshall Farms. So what I'm gonna challenge you all on is to come talk to me at the war table, at the Wynn Animal Rights table, which is the first table as you walk into the exhibit hall. Come and talk to me about getting involved in the campaign to close Marshall Farms. Let's shut the place down. Let's free those beagles. Thank you very much.